about to go into a black hole, but you can't see what's down there. Oh my God, I hate heights. I'm scared of heights. As Earth becomes less and less habitable due to the climate emergency, a group of academics known as the Astroland Agency are testing how humans can colonize Mars by 2035. Many believe the red planet can't support life as it's too cold on the surface, there's no atmosphere or oxygen to breathe, and the air is too thin to support water. According to the Astroland Agency, the only way humans can currently survive on Mars is by living underground in lava tubes. La única posibilidad de vivir en Marte sería en una cueva para estar protegido de la radiación, del frío y tener la posibilidad de obtener agua. But could humans really cope with living like that? I'm in a cave in Spain's Cantabria region where these scientists are replicating what it's like. The aim of these expeditions is to provide scientific insights to help humanity overcome the physical and mental challenges the lucky few would face on Mars, while developing new technology in the fields of energy self-sufficiency, telemedicine, robotics, and AI. And because you've f***ed up the planet, welcome to Mars. Welcome to Extinction Update, bringing you glum stories from our overheating planet. For argument's sake, let's imagine we continue to do nothing about our dying planet. What do we do once it's actually dead? Well, perhaps by then there will be technology smart enough to send a small group of millionaires to go and live on Mars. Hooray! But what would that actually be like? We went to find out. Stephen Hawking told us that our time on Earth is limited, so our species need to colonize new worlds in order to survive. Humans have been putting landers on Mars since 1976, but now NASA and commercial companies like SpaceX are trying to figure out how to get people there. But how are we going to live there once we arrive? Mars analogues, simulating missions, have also been happening for decades, but not without their own teething problems. Apparently, one of the biggest risks on a Mars mission is mutiny. In December 1973, on an 84-day stay aboard the now-defunct Skylab space station, three astronauts grew agitated at mission control, turned off all communications with Earth for a day, and spent it enjoying the view. In 1999, a month into a study by the Institute of Biomedical Problems in Moscow, two Russian astronauts got into a fistfight. One female participant was sexually harassed, and another quit in protest. A recent eight-month analogue in Hawaii was aborted after four days, when a crew member suffered an electric shock and required hospitalisation. I'm only on this mission for a day and a night, but I'm not ruling out me punching a boffin or running off with a space buggy. So these are our, like, spacesuits. We've got a helmet, we've got quite a cool jumpsuit, and I would wear this normally to a party, I think. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I feel like a unit, like... <laughs> this is what it would feel like to be a bodybuilder. <laughs> mm, bloody hell. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can't see because of the helmet. Okay. Okay. The spacesuit that I'm wearing is designed to mimic the forces that astronauts would experience while wearing a pressurized suit on Mars. We're told to treat it like a spacecraft. Imagine going jogging in a diving suit with a backpack and ski gloves on. OK, so this is where we're staying. Five minutes, yes. It's just starting now. OK, so in five minutes, we've got to get changed. OK. There, yes. Antonio, Lucy. We'll have to be in here together. Right. <laughs> it's a little bit tight. <laughs> we copy. Copy. We copy, but we are struggling. <laughs> so what have you discovered here? Lo más importante que hemos encontrado en esta cavidad que une a la vida en Marte son a los organismos más primitivos que han permitido la vida en nuestro planeta. Son las cianobacterias. Eh, date cuenta que las cianobacterias son los organismos que transformaron nuestro planeta, que hicieron posible que se formara la atmósfera con oxígeno, la capa de ozono, y gracias a ellas estamos aquí. Wow, it's so cool. 
How livable do you think it is on Mars? La única posibilidad de vivir en Marte sería en una cueva para estar protegido de la radiación, del frío y tener la posibilidad de obtener agua. So if we were to move to Mars, do you think we'd mess it up, kind of like we have with our planet Earth? Pero merece la pena vivir en la Tierra, cuidar nuestro planeta, cuidar nuestros paisajes, nuestros bosques, nuestra naturaleza, porque es un tesoro único. No podemos perder esta última oportunidad. So what do you do at Astroland Agency? I'm responsible for uh, the mindset training for Astrolanders. Can think of what a mindset we need in order to be inside a spaceship for several months or even several years and then colonizing a new planet knowing that uh, very much for sure we will never come back to Earth. So how likely is it for that to happen in my lifetime? In the worst case scenario, we're talking about 50, 60 years. So now I'm going to eat, which I'm happy about, but I don't know how it's going to taste because it's powder. Yeah, again. Okay. Beef stroganoff with rice. This powdered food sucks. This is just like a ready meal for when we arrive, though. Mars astronauts need a carefully calibrated diet to offset deficiencies and provide the necessary protein and calories to maintain muscle. Freeze-dried food topped up with vitamin D and K supplements. Most Mars scenarios involve growing food hydroponically, though. And I'm currently in bed. It's so bright and it's also, like, quite cold. I would not want to live on Mars for the foreseeable future. Good night. My first dream on Mars. Good morning from Ares Station. Space Center to Astrolander team. Please, please, do you copy? Do you copy? We lost you there for a minute. We miss you and everybody in the Earth, but we are fine. Copy that. Thank you very much. We do a fine job, Astrolander. After a day and a night on a simulated Mars, it's time to return to planet Earth. Life on Mars is the opposite of the David Bowie song. It's bleak. Your day-to-day -day is pretty much figuring out how not to die. I reckon pampered billionaires like Elon Musk would find it hard to cope, and I don't think Grimes would like it much either. Fundamentally, whichever kings, queens, or kleptocrats could afford to flee a dying Earth and set up life on Mars would spend their days wondering why we planet Earth in the first place. This is not your fault, but we need you to help unf the planet, to stop governments and big businesses acting like psychopaths, to consume less and teach more. So, if we survive, we'll see you on the right side of history.